if you're staying with the same lender, you don't have to requalify, which is why a lot of people are staying with the lenders. They're not shopping around because they may be at risk of not getting a mortgage, right? So that's number one. Number two, I think there's some programs at the banks that they will allow you to extend your amortization by five years if you can prove hardship without having to requalify. Because think about it, the banks don't want this catastrophe to happen. They don't want homes to go up for sale. Uh, I've been a customer with a big five bank for 24 years, like since I was a little teenager, right? So I'm part of their loyalty program. And uh, as part of being this part of this loyalty program, I got a call about a week ago from their mortgage renewal loyalty specialist. And all this guy does is if you've been with a bank for X amount of years, they basically call you one or two months prior to renewal to make everything easier for you. These are the rates we're offering right now. That These are the posted rates. This is what I can offer you. So all this guy does is call people every single day to renew mortgages. And he's been doing it for years. So I'm like, perfect. I'll go through the whole thing with him. And then I'm going to ask him questions. I figured it would be just good insight. So he says he makes, I can't remember how many calls he makes, but he has roughly 50 to 80 conversations per day with people that are about to renew. And I asked him, well, based on those conversations, what are these conversations like? Because I'm assuming people are feeling the pinch. Are they feeling the pinch or are they, are they not? And he said, basically out of, out of the 50, one will admit, like, listen, I probably will have to sell my house because I cannot carry this home at renewal. One will consider I have to reamortize the entire thing. So let's say I have 10 years left on my mortgage. I'm going to reamortize to 25 just to keep the payment the same. So those are the two people that are struggling the most. So that's call it, you know, five less than 5% of people. Everybody else is like, listen, I'm just going to delay that car purchase. I'm going to stop going out. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to take my kids out of this activity and I'm going to save. Because think about it. Who is going to take on the humiliation of losing their home? Like, like that is literally the absolute last thing you're going to do unless you have absolutely no, absolute no choice. So obviously there are people like that. So from his sample size, let's say less than 5% are verbalizing the fact that they are in trouble. And he says there's probably another percentage we don't know what that is that they wouldn't just admit it on the phone call that they're also struggling and they're possibly considering it but the ones that they're verbalizing it, it's like five percent so i found that interesting because to me that number seems low relative to total bullshit nobody's being honest come on i yeah i think you're right i think people are holding back right For and sure. they're just kind of kicking the can down the road so it's but it's still interesting that he as somebody i think that's probably the person on the ground that would hear it first and he's like you know what I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing people fire selling or or having to sell. But no. I think people wait until the very last moment. People are waiting to see if they qualify. And that because is the decision maker. Because if you don't qualify, like... Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I think if you stay with your existing lender, you don't have to qualify. They just renew you at your existing mortgage. The question then becomes, can you pay your bills? Whatever, whatever, rate, whatever rate that they want to give you. You don't have any right, whatever leverage is the on post them now. Yeah. Right. So you can't negotiate really because yeah. it's like, where are you going to go? Like if you have to requalify with somebody else, good luck. But that's and the same as qualifying. If you can't fucking afford the rate that they force upon you, you don't qualify. Well, like it's, by it's, default. What's, afford, right? what's affording mean, right? So it's like, remember, everybody's well, had the their thing. total debt service months. ratios take it into account. And so now maybe you don't qualify to go to a new bank because your your debt service ratios will be at 50%. But it's, you know, you just got to stop buying stuff and that, you know, you can still at least pay the bills. This is a recipe for disaster. I know. For, I mean, like, that's why we have those ratios. crazy that you don't. But, but, but the ratios were afford, from before it's, when it's, it was half the price, when it was half so, the rate. Hold, hold on. So just yeah, wait, they were stress tests. They've been stress tests since 2017. So the yeah, lowest. You can't do that. I'm not a mortgage guy, five. but I can just tell you kind of like how it you, how it plays out based on what I've seen with clients. So if if you're staying with the same lender, you don't have to requalify, which is why a lot of people are staying with the lenders. They're not shopping around because they may be at risk of not getting a mortgage, right? So that's number one. Number two, I think there's some programs at the banks that they will allow you to extend your amortization by five years if you can prove hardship without having to requalify. Because think about it, the banks don't want this catastrophe to happen. They don't want homes to go up for sale, blah, 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 right? The people that are mostly in trouble are the ones that bought since kind of like when COVID started. Everybody else prior to that is up on equity um, for the most part, right? And the ones that are in trouble, you've already seen the sales come through. Like I've done two deals already this year where the people were in trouble, they sold, the market was favorable, they got out unscathed, let's call it. So these sales are already flowing through and they have been flowing through for the last maybe 12 months. I don't know, TK, you would have a good idea on that as well. But I feel like those have already been coming through the system. And I think more are going to continue coming through the system. But the ones that bought, I don't know, 2018 and prior, I mean, 
are you really in trouble? Because I've done the math. Your mortgage is going to go up, I don't know, to the tune of, let's say, 20 to 40 percent, which is a lot of money. Who's, but who's, who's, who's income went up like that? No, okay, nobody's. But again, 20 to 40 percent on a $2,000 mortgage is very different than it's absorbable a for a while. That's the, yeah. but, but the he already mentioned though, for Darryl, a while. The, the, uh, amortization period would then get changed. So right. someone's in real trouble oh. where they really, really, yeah, you have really that option. Have it's called got, interest you know, only less, loans, less income. Right? No, 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 30 year mortgage. 30 year doesn't help most people in these. Hey guys, thanks for watching our clips channel. Why don't you go and check out some more clips? We got lots of other good content somewhere over here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Boom. That was good. That was, that was good. good. That was good. I like that. That was good.